Okay, this is a study that was um, done at the University of Toronto for the Silica Fume Association using funding from the Federal Highways Administration. Now it's it's pretty dated now. Um, it was the report was done like 14 years ago in that ballpark, but it still talks about calibrating field performance of silica fume concretes to what the models would predict. So I thought it was relevant for this talk. Okay, now how do I move this thing forward? There we are. Okay, so we wanted to, there was a series of silica fume bridge decks and parking decks that uh, had been uh, produced in the 80s and 90s. So we've got cores or the Silica Fume Association arranged to have cores taken by the various DOTs and authorities from various parking structures and bridge decks. And then we used the, the chloride penetration profiles to estimate the diffusion coefficient and drive that forward for a prediction and compare it to what the original LIFE 365 predictions would have been from the basic mix designs. The cores were taken back in 2001, 2003, which is six and 15 years old. It'd be nice to get some updates because they'd be uh, much further along uh, now than they were then. Um, and there's the LIFE 365 model. It's a fairly straightforward fixed second, modified fixed second law with a time dependent uh, uh, coefficient in, and it takes account of temperature as well. Uh, it was developed by uh, Mike Thomas and Evan Bentz some years ago for the uh, uh, consortium, the Life 365 consortium. So the, uh, we use the model as for the silica fume based on the water cement ratio and silica fume content. And we use the M value uh, either based, some of the mixes had attorney mixes with silica fume and fly ash. And when we got the cores, we divided them up. And this is just an example. They were all 100 millimeter cores, four inch cores. We took the top 50 or two inches to do surface chloride profiles. Um, we did some SEM work with, with some bits. Uh, we did bulk diffusion testing using ASTM 5056 uh, uh, on some cores deeper down below the chloride ingress. And we did uh, ASTM 1202 on some of those as well. Uh, we also just uh, measured the depth of carbonation. Essentially, they were zero in most cases and one millimeter in the, in the rest. We did their RCP test, 1202, um, which is really a conductivity test, but it's multiplied over six hours to get a, to get a charge passed in Coulombs. And that's the uh, schematic of the 1556 bulk diffusion test. It's very similar to the, the Nord test, bulk test, uh, build test 443. You know, you pond um, in a known salt solution, seal the cores on all sides except one face, put it in the salt solution for 40 days, in this case, we used 40 days. And then we measure the profile using profile grinding, millimeter profiling. And then we fit a curve to that uh, to get the surface concentration and the, and the apparent diffusion coefficient. The bridges we had cores from were uh, four from New York and one from Ohio. Ohio one was a full depth a deck, 15 years old. And um, the New York, um, decks, uh, where it was an overlay in one case, um, and there was a, another deck, high performance, and then we had a, a depth, high performance versus a conventional Portland cement concrete on the same structure. They were done at the same time. So the locations, as I show here, um, the, uh, are shown here. The I-90 is actually in New York. It's the Kraft Road one, not the Ohio DOT one. Those are the years they were placed. You can see the water cement binder ratios and the cement silica fume, and in some cases, fly ash contents. This is the Ohio uh, Bridge, Route 161. Photos were taken in 2008. That's the condition of the deck about five, six years after coring. There's a close up showing the tining on the deck. There's no evidence of corrosion on the top. Um, this is the I-90 New York Craft Road overlay. It's an overlay. They didn't replace the full depth. Um, and you can see, although the, the, the decks are still in good shape, the undersides are showing some delaminations that have carried on from the original concrete. This is one of the other Route 78 New York. It was a full depth um, um, silica fume. And that's just a picture, again, a close-up showing the the tining and 
there's no apparent corrosion, at least on the top surface, and there's no delaminations. Uh, Route 96, now the, the bridge deck was silica fume, but the approach slabs to the, to the bridge were Portland cement using their, their New York uh, spec for good quality Portland cement at the time. So they're both there. Um, there is a crack in this bridge, a longitudinal crack. In fact, there's a couple of longitudinal cracks. It probably has more to do with the design than the, the, there's no evidence of corrosion. And that's the approach slab here in this picture. There's a deck on the left, and that's the approach slab. It's a Portland cement uh, mix. Okay, which is where the cores were taken. Okay, so go back to the bridges now. I'll, I'll walk through the bridge data first. We did the rapid chloride permeability. Um, the O dot one was 690 coulombs, and that's roughly the mix design as we had it. The craft load overlay had a very high number, but we found out later that they had different, done different overlays at that location. We didn't know that at the time the cores were taken. And so it's likely that these were not, there was a latex mix and a low slump mix also used and that we we're unaware of that when the cores were taken. So this one didn't seem to represent silica fume, this particular core at that location. The other ones, the, the high performance mixes that uh, were very low, 430 and 290 and the Portland cement control on that approach was 3,900 for the, the standard Portland cement they've been using up to that point in time. The diffu uh, bulk diffusion test doing 1556, um, we did a pair for each. Uh, the average values are shown here. And you can see that the Portland cement mix on those approaches is way higher than all the silica fume mixes. And the surface profiles, looked um, like this. this is four repetitions as an example on the on the falling brook deck it was a silica fume and fly ash you can see that um, it, you know the as typical with cores you always get a low, lowering of chlorides at the surface some that's due to rain wash out you always take cores in the good weather after the spring rains and then you can see they're fairly consistent the profiles at four different core locations and the chlorides have only penetrated to the toe of the Profiles about 25 to 30 millimeters in six years. And we did that using a potentiometric titration uh, to get those data points. For the Portland cement mix, we see a lot more variability in those pro in surface profiles from that same deck um, or from the approach slabs. And you can see that instead of being 25 to 30 millimeters in that same time frame, Portland cement mix, the uh, chlorides have penetrated 60 to 70 millimeters for that same time frame. Okay, so we, then we said, well, what are we going to do with this data? We, we knew the mixed designs and we could calculate what 365 would have told us at the, at the start of the project. Um, and we could also take the surface uh, chloride profiles that we have, fit a diffusion coefficient to that. But we used two different approaches because we said, well, this is a cumulative approach for the number of years, but it's also the, because it's the, the salt is only done over a certain portion of the year and it varies with location, that we should probably, uh, to get the upper and lower bounds, do it both ways, taking different time considerations. Um, and so we did that and we used a, a curve fitting program to do that. Just as an example, this is just the same profile, the curve fit, but the only difference is we input different time frames for that. And we get, you can see the range of data based on the total time of the six years versus the uh, adjusted winter time over which there was freezing temperatures and there was a possibility of salt. And these are just the average uh, diffusion profiles or the individual and average values for the, for the different bridge decks, the, um, depending if you use the total time or the, just the winter uh, salt application time. Fairly low numbers, 1 times 10 to the minus 13 meters squared per second. For the Ohio one, um, a little higher for the craft road, uh, the full depth one, again, getting low values in the two to three range for total time. And these are the other two bridges. And this is the comparison between the Portland cement one here and the silica fume one at the top. And you can see there's a quite a difference in the diffusion coefficients calculated for the Portland cement one at the bottom and the um, uh, silica fume one at the, at the top. 
And then we took those diffusion coefficients and we drove that forward using the same uh, M coefficient as, or time decay coefficient as used in Life 365 for the mixed design and using the bulk diffusion data that we had at the time to drive that forward. So we started with a profile in this program that's never been published. It's just a in-house software that Evan Bentz um, and I, Mike was involved as well, developed. And we've just modified it to take an initial profile. So we took the existing profile at the time we cored. And then we used the diffusion coefficient and drove that forward to a prediction of when we would get corrosion, assuming a certain chloride threshold, well, 5%, I believe it's 500 ppm, and assuming a six year propagation period after corrosion initiation. And we assumed a 50 millimeter depth uh, for the cover. And if we did that, um, for the predicting the residual life using this, driving it forward from the existing profile approach, we have residual life of um, 70 years, 20 years. 40 years, 60 years, and the Portland cement one is essentially at zero at this point uh, in the prediction. Because if we used it, if it actually had a 50 millimeter profile, we'd start to get, we'd be at the end of the service life. When you compare that to what we would get from estimating it from Life 365, we would, based on Life 365, um, we would, from the existing time frame, the age that cores were taken, but using the original 365 estimates, we would get these values for residual time to of service. And so by comparison to the two, the Life 365 predictions are, are conservative, typically with this one exception, about 10 to 15 years conservative, which is a good thing. So if you're using that program, the results were conservative relative to what we think is a better estimate from the uh, aged uh, chloride ingress. Now, continuing to the parking garages, we had four parking garages, one in Salt Lake, two in Ohio, um, and one in Wisconsin at the um, Milwaukee airport. And those are the ages they were placed. Again, the mixed designs, um, one of them had uh, class F fly ash, one of them had class C fly ash in it with the silica fume. And just as an update, the Salt Lake City Garage, the ACI Research Foundation gave a project to Amanda Bergeron last year. And because the Salt Lake, that airport that we got the cores from, the garage is being torn down, not because it wasn't needed anymore, it was, it was corroding, it was because it was, they're rebuilding the airport and they had to move it. So at 31 years of age, it was torn down just this month, it's been torn down. And they got cores right at the end of September from that structure, and they're going to be doing um, chloride profiles, so we'll have a second set of profiles at the end of that uh, structure's life. So it's quite information. But the interesting thing is when she made a presentation at the silica fume meeting, yes, meeting yesterday, the mixed designs that she's been told what was in that structure are different than the ones we were given from the silica fume association. Um, hers showed no fly ash. We apparently were told it was fly ash and silica fume, so that's interesting. This shows you the issues of trying to get uh, data after the fact. This is just a picture of some of the construction at the Milwaukee airport, showing them laying down the silica fume deck, and you can see they're putting in a curing compound after the, uh, the screening, the final finishing. And I, when I looked at that in 2007, and the, the decks are doing what they're supposed to do, there was no evidence of corrosion of the deck after 18 years. Uh, cores were taken in 2001 from that structure. And how is it? And you can see at the different years, the mixed designs, we've got fairly low chloride uh, Coulomb values, under 1,000 in two cases. The one, we had one strange high number here, which makes me think that there was no silica fume in that mix at some locations. We found that with the Salt Lake Airport. Apparently, the, the ground floor where one of the cores came from was just a straight Portland cement mix unreinforced. I found that out from Amanda's presentation. So that one isn't a silica fume mix. If you take that out, it was over se about 700. So if you assume that these ones were not silica fumes, the averages are all less than 1,000 at this age. And we did diffusion coefficients, sorry. So we got diffusion coefficients based on the core, um, uh, the surface chlorides um, and um, 
sorry, for the bulk diffusion, that's from the bulk diffusion. These are from the surface chlorides, again, depending on if we take the whole age or the winter age, we get fairly low numbers regardless for those garages. Um, and so if we look at the residual surface life calculated from our surface profiles, um, and then projecting that forward, this is the amount of remaining surface life we have for those structures. This life 365 from the original mixed designs, assuming our mixed designs were correct, would have been more conservative than, than those ones. And I think that's because life 365 assumes a faster chloride buildup than actually occurs in garages, because garages aren't salted, they just get tracked in salt. Um, and so, with covered parking decks, there's no deliberate de-icing done on those structures. So there's going to be less uh, slower buildup and less buildup of salts. So in my final slide here, depths of carbonation were essentially zero. I think there was one millimeter in a few cases. Um, Coulomb values were low for the ternary mixes and the Portland cement mix were, um, were very high. Um, I didn't show you the next slide. The, um, the diffusion coefficients were lower from the surface profiles then determined from the bulk diffusion tests. Um, and diffusion coefficients predicted by Lay 365 matched the surface penetration values relatively well for the, uh, certainly for the bridge decks. Um, and but for parking decks, I mean, they're all, the deck, bridge decks were pretty good predictions. The predictions for parking decks seem to be far too conservative with Lay 365. I believe that's because of the lower, the slower chloride pickup. 